Once again, it says we're live, but this is take two. Happy Friday, everybody. We are here for a Division Three game, North versus Sweet Synergy. Joining me today is my teammate from Odor, Baby Cthulhu or Mitchell. How you doing today, Mitchell? I'm doing really great now. I'm uh, very excited to get this going. As am I, and I am anxiously staring at the Twitch feed to make sure we are going. I don't know why we aren't live currently. Um, and is the draft is live, you said, right? Yes, it is live at the moment. Oh uh, our first ban was Zagara uh, on the side of Sweet Synergy. Second ban, Zul on the side of North. First pickup here uh, was Falstad for North. Our second and third pickups are going to be Tychus and Rhaegar on the side of Sweet Synergy. Already moving forward again as the Kerrigan and Muradin picks here on North. It figures this is going lightning fast. And it's not going. It's not, we're not broadcasting. I like. I seriously don't have any idea why. No, we should be live. I'm seeing a feed now. Are you seeing a feed now? Yeah, I'm seeing a feed here. Okay, that's great, because I'm not on my end. Maybe we're... Oh, here we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. After much ado, we are officially, officially, officially wow. live. All right. If you're just joining us, Sweet Synergy versus North. North so far has selected Falstand, Kerrigan, and Muradin, and on the other side we have Tychus, Rhaegar, and Cho'Gall for Sweet Synergy Ruby. North now on the clock. I'm sure they're going to take their time with the Cho'Gall pick on Infernal, Cr in Infernal Shrines. And here we go. Um, I imagine they're considering Cho'Gall counters. They don't have a healer yet, so you could have Brightwing uh, for the poly, of course. Um, and some kind of giant killer, Raynor maybe, or Bala, Greymane, something like that. Um, they have already got one in the form of Falstad. It'd be interesting to see what else they pick up here. They could possibly go with another frontliner in the form of Leoric. Give him a little bit more sustain. That trait, or sorry, the uh, Drain Hope does go off of percentage of max health. Maybe even a Karazim for the support. A seven-sided strike can melt a Cho'Gall. But we're going to see an Oriole here uh, to take it away from the side of Sweet Synergy. They don't even want them to have the double uh, support here. And Oriole and Cho'Gall pair really well together. Yeah, that, the Oriole pick is, well, she's a good healer, but it is absolutely a denial pick. That comp that Sweet Synergy is running on the right-hand side, if they had gotten Oriole, was almost the exact same comp that Murloc Geniuses ran in the NA Regional with the double support, Rhaegar, Oriole, and a Cho'Gall. So they must have been doing their homework north, and they denied the Oriole, and then went with Sylvanas. That doesn't specifically counter Cho'Gall, obviously, but Sylvanas is really good. Uh, maybe if she gets a good split push, since they will be one body down, that will help counter Cho'Gall from Sweet Synergy. That Sylvanas is definitely going to be able to put out some great value in these first couple of shrines. Uh, it's interesting as well. The uh, oh, Okay, so the Thrall is going to be picked up to round off the Sweet Synergy team here. You know, what I will say about Sylvanas is once she gets to 16 and she gets the Vulnerable, that will help with the Cho'Gall, but that is a, a little ways off to be sure. They first have to get to 16 in order to take, to take advantage of that. Well, uh, the wait was worth it because we have a Cho'Gall game. I'm very excited to see this. I've we've Cho'Gall is always the joke pick. Everybody says, oh, we should run Cho'Gall. We should run Cho'Gall. Well, here's somebody actually putting it into work, and I love to see it. I want to see it too. And, you know, North got Kerrigan on uh, Infernal Shrines. Kerrigan is so good on Infernal Shrines, and as is Sylvanas. So map-specific comp, maybe slight edge to North. It's just the wild card on uh, Sweet Synergy in the form of Cho'Gall. It is really, you wonder how that's going to go. You know, you don't actually see Cho'Gall on too many picks in general, and Infernal Shrines doesn't pop out to, to, to me as one of the uh, maps that we would want to see him on. What about you? No, because usually he he shines on uh, the three lane maps. But what I will say is, uh, the no mana needed on the Gaul. Uh, if you get good sustain from Cho'Gall, he can just stay on those shrines forever. So um, that is something to consider on there, and that's why the Ariel denial draft selection was so good. Because with Ariel and Rhaegar, um, Cho'Gall can just stay in the uh, shrines forever, basically. Cho, both Cho and Gaul have really good tools to be able to get a lot of creeps all at once as well. And he is a big body. Those creeps are going to want to shroud around him as much as possible. And that's going to be able to have Cho Gaul be able to burn through these shrines really quickly. So it'll be interesting to see if Sylvanas can actually get a split push value here. If 
you know, they can even have that time to split push. Maybe they'll just be over too fast. We'll have to see what happens here. Yes, Jova, excellent observation. If some of you were here yesterday, not only did we fix the mic and the game volume, we also got a slick new observer that actually works. So uh, technically speaking, we're way ahead of where we were yesterday. It was opening week issues, and they continue today. But we are here. We are ready to go. And for North, we have Party Boy Cory on Sylvanas, Kix on Ariel, Undead Human on Muradin, Sunshine on Falstad, and Misty on Sylvanas. And on the side of Sweet Synergy, we're going to have maybe Buzz on Rhaegar, Beastmaster on Thrall, Blackfire94 on Tychus, Siari on the Cho, and Azuki on the Gaul. For, of course, Si Azuki. Of course. So it looks like they're going to do the Sylvanas Cheese in the top lane, and Sweet Synergy is just kind of waiting for them to reveal themselves. They have. Sweet Synergy will start to rotate with Murad in there for the zone. And he just lets them go by. That was a little odd. And Sylvanas is going to drop, no doubt. Sunshine and the rest of North is in retreat. Uh, they will get away. That was a little odd that Muradin was there to zone and didn't dismount anybody. That probably would have prevented that Sylvanas death there. Yeah, I'm surprised to not see him come out as soon as he needed to, but, you know, I don't think that there was much that he could have done to stop that Sylvanas pick. The cheese it does not work against a team like Cho'Gal. Well, they also have the root and the slow, and that's going to be a lot of uh, stoppage for the side of Sweet Synergy. What I expected him to do was just pop out, hit a W, dismount everybody to give his time to give his team time to withdraw, but that's not something he did. So we're going to be splitting into lanes here. It looks like Thrall's going to take the Kerrigan at the top. Cho'Gal and Tychus are going to start roaming around here to try and get this false head pick on the bottom. He's going to be able to barrel roll away. Nope, the Cho'Gal's going in. Ooh, there we go. The Gaul is going to be able to poke him down. Night, wait, wait a tower dive by Siazuki and just barely finish off Falstad. Couldn't quite get away. Um, I want to see North pull back here. This is essentially a four on three. It's interesting to see how aggressive this Cho'Gal is being. You don't see a lot of Cho'Gal play in general, but I really like what I've seen so far. Yeah, and you know, because you don't see too much of it in competitive, although I, when, I think you're going to see him start to be more of a niche pick. A lot of teams aren't practiced on how exactly to deal with him. Yeah, that's probably the hardest part here for the side of North. They just need to figure out how to deal with that Shogal. So interesting strategic decision. Sweet Synergy is choosing to jump on the shine straight away. North is choosing to soak until 4. And it looks like Kerrigan and Thrall will be dueling in the top lane, both getting the split soak. You know, both the characters here that, that both North and Sweet Synergy have down at the Shrines are going to be able to take those down pretty fast. And Thrall is still going to stay in the top in order to lane and get a little bit more push. So we're going to have all five members of North here trying to defend this Shrine. And this is where Kerrigan should shine. Not quite the 410 without her Maelstrom, but Kerrigan is nailed on the Shrine Guardians. And so this is kind of where she needs to be. She wouldn't have been my choice for a split soak. Sweet Synergy takes the first shrine. It is a frozen Punisher. You want to see North get into position to bait that behind the wall. They're too far forward. That frozen Punisher, they just barely get behind the wall, but you do not want Ariel to eat that frozen Punisher. That should have been Muradin's job there. Yeah, he it did end up getting it, but unfortunately he was just a little too close to the Ariel there. Luckily, North is going to be able to burn that shrine down pretty fast here. Yeah, they were a hair late getting behind the wall, but in the end didn't hurt them too, too much, and they were able to get the job done. Sweet Synergy, though, has secured about a half-level lead. You know, they left Thrall in the top lane because they knew that they didn't need to have him there in order to capture the shrine. And here's the gank. He's gonna... I don't think he's gonna be able to get away from I this one. I don't think so either. Beastmaster there picked off with the aggressive flight from Sunshine on Falstad. And in terms of the health of the lanes here, it looks like Sweet Synergy definitely has the position that they want um, against somebody like a Sylvanas. Yeah, absolutely. You do have uh, three on, well, four on three now with the uh, Siazuki taking up two members. They drive them back, but they've basically lost all of this bottom lane's front wall. 
One they of the also got a really good push in mid here, and of course Thrall was able to do a really good job there top during the shrine. Aggressive Dwarf Toss from Muradin, but the uh, mercenaries were able to body block the Stormbolt there. Sunshine with the aggressive fly-in. One of the things with Cho'Gal is if he falls behind in level, it is really difficult for him to uh, continue to battle on even footing, even more so than many other characters, so you really want to make sure you stay at least even when there's a Cho'Gal on your team. Rhaegar getting caught out. He will be able to get away. There was no Detainment Strike or Stormbolt follow-up. And now you have Tychus and Cho'Gal absolutely melting Muradin, and he is gonna fall. That's a great pick on the side of Sweet Synergy. Cho'Gal was actually trying to hearth back just to get some extra health, and then turned that a fight around on them once he noticed that they were sticking around. Yeah, it was a good counter engage. Kix decides to rotate the safe way. That was a smart call. Uh, Misty needs to be careful here. A sweet synergy is here in force. They're going to clear the wave, pick up the experience, and then rotate top. Falsad's going to stay in bottom here, try to catch up on levels before he flies up. That global really allows him to be a lot of places at once, so we're probably going to see him rotate to mid and try to get some XP there as well. You know, Chogal really excels in the early game, and uh, North might just not be able to compete until 10 on these shrines. You know, it was just like you're saying, they know that if Cho'Gal gets behind, they're going to be really in a tough position here. Kerrigan's getting forced off of the shrine. That's going to put North in a really tough position to try to get this shrine. And okay. Muradin is going to be picked off here by the Tychus, by the Root, by the Slow, and by the Cho'Gal, of course. That's an aggressive combo on with the low-life Kerrigan, and she gets the pick off on Thrall. That was a really nice aggressive, um, a little bit ballsy counter engage there by party boy Corey on Kerrigan. Very ballsy, very smart, very confident. She knew she had that. So now just uh, not too much of a Shrine Guardian lead from North, so this uh, Shrine still very much in doubt. An excellent detainment strike from Kix on Tychus, but now Ariel is caught out of position. Rhaegar will go down while Kix is taking the damage. Tychus and Siazuki on Cho'Gal will be forced to retreat now that Muradin has spawned and is back in action. Thrall here just trying to get a little bit of poke action it looks like. They know that they have to stay safe, they don't have their Rhaegar to heal them up, but they are pretty much all at full health. And there goes the Ariel. that's a great pick on the side of Sweet Synergy. That's going to help a lot with this next pick, probably on the Falstad Nope, Barrel rolls out. You know, and that's an excellent example of actually why Muradin and Ariel should have been switched in their positioning. It should have been Muradin who was far forward, the first person to make contact with the team, and Ariel with her sweeping strike should have been in on the Guardians, because Muradin's not going to clear those out very quickly anyway. You know, North did get the Punisher here, but they stuck around just a little too long. They wasted maybe a little bit too many resources trying to get the Shrine, and unfortunately three members of North go down just as this uh, Punisher spawns. Yeah, they're not going to get much mileage out of this uh, Punisher other than uh, denying it from the opposing team. You're going to get just a little bit of work done here on that top fort and that top wall. And we're going to see probably a split coming in from these teams. Uh, North really needs to catch up on levels here. We have Sweet Synergy up at 11 already. Um, and only Kerrigan, it looks like, is responding to this push in top. Well, they really can't respond because they don't have 10 yet. I would like to see them in multiple lanes here soaking till 10. And you may have to give up the fort to do it because you don't want to engage with no 10. Excellent you know, cleanse by Beastmaster there. Up there at top. They are going to try to take it to them. Falstad is in on the bottom, um, trying to push in forts, trying to get that 10, maybe even trying to do a little bit more work while everybody is distracted in the top. Yeah, and that's not a bad, bad ploy, especially because North realized that and backed off very intelligently. Falstad's trying to at least get the fountain that's down there. Luckily, he has minions to back him up and absorb those blows from the fort. So this top fort will certainly fall. Falstad has decided that he is no longer split soaking. That is a really aggressive dive from Kerrigan. There's the Ancestral on Cho'Gal, the aggressive gust. This is our first full five-on-five five engage of the game. And Sylvanas and Kerrigan, the first ones to fall. Muradin will probably go next. There were, they were so close, North was, to pulling off the Cho'Gal death. The Ancestral was perfectly timed. And what started out as a very close team battle turns into a four-for-nothing Probably soon to be five for nothing. Nope, Kix is going to get away. So a four for nothing team fight in favor of Sweet Synergy. I feel like Falstead was just a little late there on the rotation, and you're right. It doesn't really matter because that Ancestral came out on the Cho'Gal just at right, the, the right time. Absolutely. A second later, and Cho'Gal would have died, no doubt. 
So our shrine's gonna be in the bottom here. We are gonna have everybody kind of rotate in late. Kerrigan's gonna stay up in the top lane to try to clear. And I don't even know if North can contest this down 11 to 13. Um, the talent tier advantage with the Cho'Gal, it, it would be a very tall order. Kix is caught out of position again. Nice detainment strike to back up Tychus, but I don't think they're going to care diving behind the tower. He barely gets away. He was down to 88 hit points. That was a little scary if you were the Oreo right there. Face checking that shrine was not the best idea. Um, I don't really like this engagement right here from North. They're split and outnumbered. You're not going to accomplish must here. Only bad things will happen until they get their full team. Then the Kerrigan's going to be surprised by the Cho'Gal in the Shroud. She's going to probably go down. Here comes the Sundering, followed up by the uh, Storm Bolts here from Cho'Gal. Crystal Aegis is going to be on the Sylvanas, but it's not going to help her as she goes down. Uh, you know, those are the bad things I was talking about. Three deaths from North, none from Sweet Synergy. Um, you know, when I casted uh, Sweet Synergy last season, two of these um, players were on there. Uh, they're really good, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, from what we've seen tonight, I think that that is safe to say. The surprise Cho'Gal there did a lot of work for them, and North did not expect that to come out at all. And Kerrigan is similar to Cho'Gal in that it's really hard to play her when you're down in level because she just doesn't have the damage output and explodes so fast when she dives in. Not only that, but the more of a level difference you have with the Cho'Gal, the more powerful he is. And again, you, what you talked about earlier, he has no mana. They can both spam their spells as much as they possibly can. The only limitation for them are cooldowns. Now, I'm curious if they're going to just take this all the way or they're going to leave it at 39. Okay, they, they did take it the whole way. And we're having a little bit of a skirmish here. And Todd, Rhaegar might get caught out. That would be a huge pickoff for North, and it is. That was uh, Rhaegar going a little bit too far, maybe overconfidence, or he didn't realize how close North was. So they pick off Rhaegar, clean up the Mercs, and now they're able to defend this bottom Punisher with no Rhaegar to help them. Sweet Synergy has simply decided without Rhaegar, they're going to go back and do other things, and now they're coming up for the engagement. It looks like they want to at least have a little bit of pressure here, maybe push off North from that Punisher, get a little bit more value in the push. Tychus is coming back as well. That camp is also going to come up right behind them and help get a lot of value as well. Yeah, it was a nice little skirmish here. There goes the Chogo ultimate. Definitely got some damage down on Muradin, but an another offensive gust. There's this uh, counter engage sundering. The Crystal Aegis saves Ariel temporarily. But the Molten Block is also going to save Cho'Gal from that Crystal Aegis as the rest of North falls down. And this might be the end of the game here. I might be a little bit early. I think they're a little too low on life to end, but they are going to try. There's the Ancestral, the and now they're not low on life anymore. It's never too early for Cho'Gal. To end the game. Nope, this is absolutely game. It's going to be a 12 minute game here and a win for Sweet Synergy Ruby in their first game of the season. Well played by both teams. I think that, that Cho'Gal just threw North for a little bit of a loop and uh, once they fell behind they just weren't quite able to come back. You know, Sweet Synergy had a really, really smart draft as well. Their first two pickups were both Tychus and Rhaegar. One, Tychus is the counter to Cho'Gal, so they took it away from North without giving it away in the ban phase. And the Rhaegar, as we saw with that Ancestral Healing, does just all too much healing to that Cho'Gal. The most important thing of the night, though, is Battlenet wants me to rate the hero I just played, and I think that's funny. I think I'm going <laughs> to give mine a 5 out of 5. <laughs> Uh, so there we go, guys. That is our Division 3 game of Friday Night North falling to Sweet Synergy Ruby. I appreciate everybody's patience in uh, waiting for us to get all of our Week 1 Season 3 snafus sorted out. But uh, everything is sorted out, and we were able to get a game in. Um, I would love to stay for a little more post game uh but because we started late i've got to fly out of here and pick up my daughter so good games to everybody mitchell it was fun we'll of course do it again soon and look forward to seeing everybody in chair league and the nexus absolutely everybody have a good night